Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile card or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. OppermanReport.com Hey, do you like what you're hearing? Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report, reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on on advertising rates. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. That's 833 833- for KMD Law, personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMD-LAW. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMD Law. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call, 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flight Company is a proud member of the handcrafted soap and cosmetic guild. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of new world order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, 
and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, you can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting uh, either through my website, emailrevealer.com, or you can email me at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. If you like our show, check out our members section. We've got a lot of great new content up there. As a matter of fact, there's a couple of classic shows in there about Steve Bannon, who's in the news now. Check that out, Steve Bannon's Porn and Meth House. Uh, that's a popular show. And also, to our archives are always free over at Spreaker.com. You go there for free sign up you get an email notification anytime we put up new content and uh, there's a chat room and i also do a, an hour live there just exclusively on spreaker every friday night at 10 p.m so you know things are precarious out here with this covid uh, uh, economy and so you may not find us one day you could find us turn and tune into a wwpr or a WKC, kcaa and not find us there because uh, the show went broke uh, so always uh, you can follow us through spreaker.com now, we have a guest today, Alicia Magazu, who's an attorney uh, for the Community Legal Services of Mid-Florida. Alicia, are you there? I'm here. Thank you so much. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who is Alicia Magazu? Sure, Magazoo. and thank you for having me. Magazoo, yep, that's correct. And thank you for having me. I am a staff attorney at Community Legal Services of Mid-Florida. I work in the Community Economic Development Unit, and we... Um, provide services to small businesses and nonprofits or people who want to start a small business or a nonprofit. And we're also involved in the affordable housing development space and providing legal services to nonprofits that are engaged in that activity. And we partner uh, with, through that unit and that program, we partner with the Florida Community Development Legal Project, which is a group of legal services and legal aids across the state of Florida that provide those services. So we have a very large coverage area as a group assisting small businesses and nonprofits. Well, let me ask you something, because I've only been living down here in Florida, the Tampa Bay area, I live down in Bradenton, Florida, and I've only been living down here since February. And after COVID hit, I'm driving around, and you see all these four lease signs, these small businesses that have clearly gone out of business due to the shutdown. And now, how would you, obviously, those people didn't get the help they needed, right? Uh, so what's going on? Right. Right. Uh, well, there's that, that's a there's tons of responses I think to that that answer and, and and part of it you know you look at we're in an emergency situation one that we weren't prepared for um, and I think that's evident uh, in, in lots of different areas but definitely for small businesses and and so there were steps taken to provide you know immediate emergency services and and, and relief to small businesses um, but with any large-scale program that you're trying to put together in an instant of course it's also going to have its problems and one of those problems was those programs didn't necessarily uh, provide a, a, a viable option for the, the really small business, some mom and pop type businesses. Uh, in particular, you can take a look at the Paycheck Protection Program that was released. Uh, and you know, the idea of that program was to put money in the, the hands of small businesses so that they could keep their employees on payroll and also have a little bit of money available to pay you know, things like rent or mortgage interest payments and that kind of thing. Uh, but one issue with that was um, their definition of what a small business was under PPP was not exactly what you and I would think of as small business, like the mom-and-pop pizza shop on the corner. And as we all saw on the news, a lot of that um, came out very evident in, in the, the, when the money was first released and dried up almost immediately by some of these much larger companies that technically fit the definition of a small business under PPP and were awarded money under PPP, leaving the smaller businesses um, without a lifeline and without access to that, to that money. And there's a lot of reasons for that, too. Um, you know, just having access to a lender that would process an application, for example. Um, a, a lot of the control over how that PPP was dispersed was left to institutions that were participating in the program, so your Bank of America, your Wells Fargo, and uh, the, the big lending institutions that we're aware of. And uh, if you didn't have a relationship with one of those banks, that was already you know, uh, put you in a hard spot. And if you didn't have a lot of money invested in those banks, also put you in a hard spot. 
And if you weren't looking for an extremely sizable loan, that put you in a hard spot. So again, that created a lot of problems for your small mom and pop businesses that you know, weren't going in for a $10 million loan because uh, that's not the type of business that they run. Now, another thing, I had your director on yesterday, uh, Jeffrey Harvey, mm-hmm. and a uh, great guest, by the way. And you guys are doing great work over there. I'm yeah. very, very impressed by what's going on. Thank yes, you. Uh, incredible. Thank you. Um, I wish we had that back in Nevada. I mean, there's nothing like this over there. Um, no. <laughs> really. Oh. And, uh, but he, he said, well, there's an income threshold before you could help somebody. So now how does that work with, with someone who has a small business? Uh, they have to have a, a low income in order to get your assistance. Then how would they even be in business to begin with? So that's the great thing about our particular unit. The different units within CLSMF have different income thresholds and Thankfully for our CED unit, we have a a much broader definition of what we consider low to moderate income. Right now, we're operating under a grant that allows us to assist anybody that makes 140% of area median income. Um, So that's pretty high. I think in Orange County, let's say for a family of four, I think that means you can make around, I believe it's like $90,000 as a family and still be able to qualify for services through our our unit. So... um, that, that's definitely a benefit for our small business. And if you're working under a nonprofit, um, it's, it's kind of a different threshold. It's just you know, what type of work are you doing? Because very few nonprofits would be outside of the financial realm of what we'd be able to help within our unit. So we focus on, you know, are, are you providing a service to the public that's, that's beneficial to low to moderate income individuals, uh, which is true for most nonprofits. So we have a pretty wide range of who we can provide assistance to through our CED. But, but you also help people to start up new businesses? And, and what would the income threshold be for that? Right. So we look at the individuals in that case to say you wanted to start an LLC as a single member LLC. We just look at your income for you and your family and qualify you as 140% area median income for the county that you live in. If you were starting an LLC with two members we or a partnership, for example, we would look at both of the members individually or the partners individually and qualify them the same way as long as you make 140 percent or less of the area median income in the county that you operate we can provide you with assistance now one of the problems i had when i applied for the ppp was that they said that my credit wasn't good enough okay but you know my credit's pretty good and i get a lot of uh, credit cards in the mail all the time uh, what is the threshold for the credit yeah, that's been a, a very interesting aspect of all of this. Is what exactly are the parameters of who's getting access to this and who's not? And, and what are the thresholds? And there's, there's not been a lot of transparency in how that's, that's working. Um, and, uh, you know, that's certainly one of the arguments that we have from a social justice and the type of clientele that we see come through our doors is what are they looking at? Um, how credit history, credit numbers, are are you asking for demographic information when you're um, evaluating these loans and do we have the data available to determine what all of this looks like and and, and we don't really. Um, So it's it's kind of hard to say what it is that the lenders are looking for because to some degree there was lender discretion in how they were going to dole out these loans um, and we just don't have that that data. Okay, so one day Alicia McGaz was sitting at her desk, and she hears that okay, there's a new pay P- PPP, payroll protection plan, in the works. Uh, what Now, do they give you advanced knowledge? Hey, Alicia, this is how it's going to work, and this is what you need. Is there a handbook <laughs> right. or what? No. Yeah, no, well, especially not, not in this scenario that we find ourselves in, as everybody keeps saying, we're in uncharted waters, and this is all completely um, – new and and no one really knows what what's going on and we didn't really know to expect this um so you know and and in that respect i I at least feel for the people that are trying to navigate these waters with this program coming out those that had to come up with it and then those who had to kind of figure out how to administer it you know the banks in, in and of themselves administer it without a lot of guidance so um you know on the one hand everybody's just kind of in the same boat that no one no one really knew that this was coming no one really knew how to navigate it when it came out um and and i honestly fingers crossed that it just doesn't implode on itself when we start going through the forgiveness process Mm. um because we all just kind of fumbled our way through it hoping that we were doing it correctly um so time will tell on that one so just fingers crossed that, that this 
actually does some of what it was intended to do. Now, if you're a small business right now and you're in trouble, is there any help out there right now? There is, yep. So um, these programs, they're not taking, so going back to, they're not taking applications, I don't believe, at the moment for PPP, but who knows what's going to happen um, in, when Congress comes back into session. Maybe we'll have some more assistance coming down the road there. You can still apply for EIDL. You can't get the advanced grant anymore, but that's still available. But all of that aside, there's there's assistance for you um, if, if you need help navigating those things or if you need help maybe with um, landlord-tenant um, issues as a business and, and those types of things. In Florida, we have an opportunity for you to apply for assistance on a Florida Community Development Legal Projects website, and that's flcommunitydevelopment.org. We're partnering with Lawyers of Good Government, and you can go apply for services directly on our website related to COVID-19 and get advice and guidance on some of the issues you might be having with COVID-19. If you still have financial issues, there are uh, local options that maybe people aren't aware of either that check your local cities and counties website and their economic development uh, departments you might be able to get some financial assistance grants through your local government as well so definitely check that out because for those that have been denied ppp um I, I have at least heard stories and success stories of being able to get money at the local level so definitely check that out now, there, there was a moratorium on, on evictions and foreclosures, but that was for uh, residential, not, not commercial, right? Commercial people were being evicted. Right. You could, so there's, and a lot of that depends on, on locality and how your court system is functioning um, and possibly what type of mortgage backs the property you're renting in. Um, but there's not really anything stopping or protecting the commercial tenant at this point, other than to just negotiate with your landlord saying, listen, there's, I mean, and this is uh, the honest truth. Um, there aren't a lot of other people knocking on the door behind me trying to get a place to lease. Uh, if I leave here, most small businesses are in the same boat. So honestly, for, for small businesses that find themselves in that position, uh, you know, just negotiating alternatives with your landlord to get through this situation hopefully would be somewhat productive and and the landlord's going to understand that if they spend all that money to get you out they're not going to have somebody else in that space so if they can negotiate lower rent for a shorter period of time and you know those types of negotiations they, they'd be better off but that's always landlord specific, of course. Yeah, and, and just think, too, as well, e even if there was no rent, the landlord says, okay, listen, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll float you till this is over. Uh, electricity, payroll, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, you know, uh, right. it's, it's a hopeless situation. Right. What are we going to do? This is just a, a crazy, hopeless right. situation, man. <laughs> <sighs> it does seem that way at times, yes, I agree. And so now we're about to see a record number of uh, residential evictions throughout the state of Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to happen, or do you think uh, DeSantis will step in, or, or or Trump will step in, or something? In there? You know, it's kind of hard to say how all of that's going to pan out. They haven't. It seems like in Florida, every month we get towards the end of this moratorium, they decide to extend it, um, kind of leaving people hanging until the last week in the month. You know, freaking out. Is is this it? Are we going to get a renewal of a moratorium? Um, so looking at it from that perspective it's hard to say that we're going to be proactive to prevent some of this from starting but you can already see in orange county for example that there has been i think we talked about this this morning on our staff call i think we've had over 400 evictions already sitting there in the pipeline in the court system since the change in the moratorium from um the august date to the september date so i hope we're, we're hopeful at legal services that that folks are going to take a look at that and see just how big of a uh, avalanche we're about to embark, you know, that's going to occur if we don't uh, do something about this to keep it from happening. But right now it's kind of hard to say how that's going to pan out. But we are, we are ready for it. And one of the cool things, say, in, like, Orange County, and, again, this is something you can check with your local cities and counties about. There may be money and programs available to pay for back rent. And... Um, on the condition that a landlord wouldn't evict you at least for 60 days after receiving that, um, that's just an example, um, but not evict you after they receive that subsidy uh, to help people avoid this avalanche of evictions. But right now it's kind of uh, just Band-Aids. 
So I, there really should be something more sweeping, um, mm. or we may find ourselves in trouble. Yeah, it's not like they didn't throw a lot of money at this. It's just they didn't get to, to the normal people's hands. You had to have a real uh, connection, a lot of pull to, to get that money. Now, But it, it also, right. to some of these apartment complexes, they got the PPP money. They got the EI uh, uh, DL money. Am I correct? It's, they were eligible for it, yeah. most likely. I mean, certainly depends on their circumstances. Um, yeah, so uh, that's kind of where we, we hope that conversations between landlord tenant. I mean, even in the residential, commercial, it's the same story. There aren't, if, if you evict 400 families, there aren't 400 new families coming in to take those spots. So, you know, from a, from a cash coming in perspective, you have to kind of take a, you know, a reality check here and, um, you know, you're not going to get a replacement for that money if you kick out all these families. It's just not how that's going to work in the COVID-19 world. So, um, yeah, and, yeah, and you know what'll happen? People will move in with their cousin, with their with their uncle, with their sister, and now more mm-hmm. people are, are, are contracting the disease on top of each other. Right. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> okay. yeah, so, you know, <laughs> they should let you and me run this thing. Man. We'd fix it in a weekend. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Gladly. Over a bottle of wine, right? <laughs> <No>. Okay. <laughs> Oh, right. Okay. Now, uh, yesterday, Mr. Harvey was saying that uh, he kept mentioning the number five thousand uh, evictions in the queue. Now, is that in just in your county there, or is that in statewide of Florida? Uh, I believe that would probably be a reference to the state. Oh. Like I said in our, our meetings this morning, we were talking about well that four hundred have been filed since August first. Now, we cover twelve counties, so it could be our service area, but. Regardless of whether it's Orange County, state of Florida, our service area, 5,000 already with a somewhat sort of moratorium, we'll say, in place, but still a bit alarming that, that there's that many in the queue at the moment. But now can the courts even handle that, handle that many uh, evictions just to get past the, the, the judgment stage? <laughs> yeah, I, I would not want to be uh, a judge right now um, having to deal with how this is going to come down. Uh, no, I mean the answer is there's, there's just no. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out as well. Um, it, there's just no way that the court system can handle that type of and and, and do it properly. Um, mm-hmm. So certainly no one wants to advocate for any type of quickie eviction just to get them out of the system. But um, no, it's, that's another problem that we're certainly going to face. The amount of time it's going to take to process all of that's just unfathomable really okay so you get a, a three-day notice right down there. it's a five-day notice what is it uh you know i'll be honest with you i'm not yeah. right because you're not familiar yeah, with you're that not, part uh, of it, yeah. I, yeah okay but the thing is okay <laughs> you get the three-day or the five-day notice and then they go take it to the judge and you get the judge is going to have to make a judgment so we're talking about even there's going to be a, a long delay there weeks before the judge issues the judgment and here in my county they're not actually doing evictions the the sheriff or the constable down here, whoever does them, uh, says they're not doing right. it. Yeah, so. Right, issuing the writ and everything. Yeah, it's, um, and I think maybe, and don't quote me on this, yeah. but I think even with COVID, I think it's actually a 30-day. If, if there's there's a 30-day provision um, regarding notice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, so, and each jurisdiction is different. I mean, that's the thing that, yeah. that makes all of this very, very difficult. Everybody's doing it differently, different um, the, how they proceed in the case. Like some people think that they can't even file the eviction at all and don't realize that yes maybe in this jurisdiction they can and have done that and they don't file an answer and it goes all the way through the process they've been defaulted out and then it's just sitting there waiting to be executed um so it's 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 really important to know what's going on in your area and know who you can go to for for help and guidance on those matters and and for us, um, if you follow us, uh, we, we put a lot of stuff on Facebook about, oh. um, we actually have this neat little chart that you can follow. If you're a tenant, you can kind of look at this chart that we've developed either on Facebook or on our website. We have a lot of COVID resources available um, that will kind of talk you through the process and um, give you an idea of what it looks like, because it is kind of different than what, even if you were familiar with landlord-tenant law, how it functions under COVID is a little bit different with all this the moratoriums and everything going on um so uh, it's a good resource and kind of give you a little bit of maybe peace of mind and and knowing how it works right now so on facebook community legal services of mid florida has a facebook page yes we do what about florida community development uh, legal project we don't have a facebook page uh we just have a website floridacommunitydevelopment.org um and all of our information is available there. You can apply for services right there, and COVID-19 information is available there. And we try to keep it um, 
somewhat as up to date as we can. As we all know, things are changing. It seems like weekly at this point, um, and try try to keep it as. Um, covering all of Florida as we can. Yeah, one thing I'd like to point out, because you mentioned that you think it's a 30-day notice. That was um, the 30-day notice up until September 1st. They, they had to get notice like uh, uh, August 1st. Uh, they have to give you that notice before they're telling you they're going to file an eviction, uh, serve you with an eviction notice. Um, and the other thing, too, I wanted to make the audience aware of, a lot of people think that, well, Mr. Trump the other day just signed some papers that protects us all again from landlords and being evicted. Is that true? Uh, you know, I don't have direct information. I have heard uh, stories about that, um, but I haven't followed it down to see whether it's true or not. Um, so I- yeah, we checked that out. Yeah, what he did was he sent a recommendation over to HUD uh, to go look for money and uh, to the, uh, the Department of Commerce to go look look for money. And then, you know, to, to solve this problem. <laughs> get, get on it there, Mr. Ben. Uh, ben uh, what's Ben Carson? Yeah. Now, okay, now, personal right. question. Alicia... Uh, Magazoo. You could be doing uh, personal injury law. You could be doing a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, right. What? What? Uh, you're passionate about this work, right? I am. Yes. Um, it's the whole reason I went went to law school. Uh, it wasn't to go and make money and and chase an ambulance or um, not get to talk to people and help people directly or any of that kind of thing. I went because I wanted to be able to help people, and uh, I just kind of ironically ended up um, doing a. Uh, postgraduate type um, internship, or externship, we'll call it, um, at Jacksonville Area Legal Aid. And uh, it, it, well, I was pretty much hooked ever since. I've been working in legal services and legal aid my entire legal career, and it gives me the opportunity to do what I want to do, and, and that's to help people who need it the most and give a voice to people who don't have one normally. And um, just, I love what I do. You know, I, I really love to hear that, and you yeah, have an open uh, uh, floor here. Anytime you're working on something you're passionate about and you want to come back and talk to me about it, we'll love to have you back. Uh, Great. On this sure. topic here, though, what do you want to leave us with on the end of the world, <laughs> the apocalypse, <laughs> <laughs> the plague that we're living through? Uh, yeah. One thing I do want to highlight, um, I mean, I, I hope that there's there's some silver lining here uh, in, in all of this, and, and it it's... COVID-19 is starting to highlight a lot of the issues that we have in our country and a lot of the, it's highlighting those who are being left behind. Those who are being impacted the most by this are also the people that are often um, impacted the most by a lot of government decisions or just lack of action. Uh, we've seen that a lot of uh, minority business owners and women-owned businesses aren't having access uh, for lots of different reasons to these programs. We've seen that they're impacted more in their health uh, because of COVID-19 and, and their poor housing conditions. And um, it's, it's just, it's, it's time that we recognize uh, these areas where we can improve and use this as a moment not to just band-aid these, these issues, but to really make change um, and, and improve the conditions in our country through housing and access to credit uh, and, and government opportunities. Um, so I, I, I hope that that's something that's a main focus of the recovery. Yeah, and healthcare too. So many of our problems would be solved uh, if we could just ad- address mental illness and drug addiction, uh, some uh, basic healthcare issues. Uh, Alicia, right. yeah, thank you. And housing has a lot to do with that. Uh, you know, access to clean, safe housing and, and people's health, there's a major connection there. So absolutely, I agree. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Alicia, Mag- Magazoo, and what are the what are the two websites yeah. you want to promote the the uh... the FL Community Development dot org, and the other one is the uh, CLSMF dot org. org. There you go. Thank you yep. so much, Alyssa. That's awesome. Thank you. Right. Hi. And now a word from our sponsors, OppermanReport dot com. Hey, do you like what you're hearing? Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report. Reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on advertising rates. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? 
Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. That's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be. Because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is Investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. And and we have another guest now, Katie V. Kelly, Ph.D. Esquire. She's a supervising attorney uh, in the Children's Rights Unit at the Community Legal Services of Mid-Florida Incorporated. That's clsmf.org. Ms. Kelly, are you there? 
Yes, I am. Thanks, Ed. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who is Katie Kelly? <laughs> My pleasure. Um, you know, I, I, I came to law a little later in life. I started out, I have a PhD in psychology and an emphasis in children. I stayed home with my kids a couple years and then decided I needed to get back to work. Um, worked for school districts, um, mostly in Minnesota. Worked there for a good number of years. Learned a lot about education. Um, then got out, uh, decided to take a sabbatical, did a year of law school, went to law school, and now I'm an attorney and I practice uh, educational law. So I'm, I'm the kid that could never get away from the crayons and notebooks. I, I love anything education related. There you go. So now what, do you, what kind of services does a children's right unit uh, provide? Well, Ed, we, we help mostly parents of kids with disabilities. Like, you know, parents struggle. It's hard enough, right, being a parent. But if you have a child with a disability, you come to realize really quickly that education is very, very difficult to navigate. Um, there are a lot of federal laws that apply to it that are different than for typical children. So parents get lost in this kind of quagmire. And in a world where, you know, schools are reducing the amount of services because they don't have all the funding in the world, it really puts the parents in a difficult position a lot of times. Speaking of funding, does uh, the state of Florida provide all the, the services you think they they should? Is that a loaded question, Ed? Oh, no. you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. Look, I, I, you know, because of our tax base here, um, we're a little different, I think, in Florida. Um, we're 27th in the state educationally for K-12. Um, you know, we're not in the top tier. We're number one for secondary education for colleges, which is great. But no, um, schools are not funded to the degree they need to be funded by any means. Um, kids with disabilities get extra federal funding uh, because they have those disabilities and the federal government supports those students. But even that is not enough. That hasn't grown with the economy. That hasn't you know, grown with uh, the needs, right? Because it seems like we have so many more kids with disabilities than we had 20 years ago. Really? Why do you think that is? Oh, you know, that's, that's a tough question. Um, the, you know, the numbers for autism, there are, you know, by some studies, 900% more children with autism than there were 20 years ago. Um, I remember working in the pilot project for autism through the National Institute of Health when I was an undergrad, and um, we, we had a hard time finding 13 kids with autism. Now, you know, I don't know of many families who don't have a child or a child relative somewhere on, on the spectrum. So, I, and I don't know what that's about. That's terrifying. Uh, what do you mm -hmm. think, in what area of services to children do you think the state of Florida is failing the most? Um, I, you know, because of my perspective, right, if you're, if you're a carpenter, you're deal with hammers and nails, and I'm in special ed, and so mm. I believe that, you know, the kids with disabilities in the state of Florida are really underserved, um, really underserved, and I think it's a shame because, you know, a lot of these children have such amazing potential outcomes that they can't realize because they're not uh, appropriately supported in school. In what areas are you helping uh, preserve children's rights? Well, we do, uh, we always start with individual representation of a client, right? Someone calls us, uh, they're having a hard time. Um, from that point, we, we review the files. Uh, we see if other files in that county look similar. If they do, we not only get a remedy for the student, we file, uh, we do impact work where we will file a federal complaint or a state complaint that, uh, you know, for instance, might make an allegation that all students in the district um, with autism are, you know, not being supported. They are not being educated the same number of hours a day or they are not being provided accessible transportation. Um, there's a whole world of things that, you know, we've done, but usually we try to do impact work where um, we're not just helping our client, but we're helping all the kids that are similarly situated to that student. And I, I know one of the th things that you find very important is grandparents' rights. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we're, 
I don't need to tell anybody, our new normal is very abnormal. <laughs> and so uh, we have seen where parents, for whatever reasons, are unable to adequately support their own children, and grandparents come in. I mean, you know, we noticed that uh, initially through the opioid crisis, mm. where parents could not parent, and then we had to um, have grandparents step in, and thank God for grandparents. So we help them a lot. And for them, you know, education has changed so much. They are two full generations away from their educational experience. And so, um, and that's a delight. That's, that's one of the better, well, best parts of my job is helping grandparents. That's amazing because th th those are issues I would ne you know, never consider. You're right. We have this opioid crisis, so the parents can't take care of their kids. The kids wind mm -hmm. up with the grandparents, and the grandparents can't do the new math because <laughs> you know, no right. one can. Right. Yeah. And anybody who's listening who has tried to do sixth grade math, you're not alone. I couldn't do sixth grade math right now. It's it's like a foreign language suddenly. So, um, yeah, it is. It's, it's good work. I, I feel really blessed to be able to do the work I do. Yeah, thank God. My kid, she was always a self-starter. You know, she was always organized <laughs> with her post-its and her, her highlighters, I, you know. I, yeah, I had one out of three like that. Ed. I had a daughter like that, and my boys were a little less type A. Uh, so, there you, there you yeah. go. Now, you, you were saying, yeah. too, in the email that the COVID-19 has, has uh, created new problems and issues. What, what's going on? Oh, wow. Um, you know, this happened so quickly, especially in the state of Florida. You know, we got that large increase in cases relatively early, um, and it shut the schools down. And so kids went on what are called distance learning plans. And that was just a hot mess. That the schools were not prepared to do it. And I can understand how they weren't prepared. Nobody was expecting a pandemic uh, over spring break. And so um, kids went back. Our kids didn't go back. Kids were at home suddenly. And their parents were having to educate them with the schools. And so, you know, people couldn't work, uh, kids didn't have computers in home, um, they didn't have internet access. It was basically very, very difficult. And there was a lot of disparity in home between kids who have computers and kids who have internet and kids who have parents who can support them and the other kids who did not. So that, that started it in March. And then we have slowly kind of dribbled through this. Um, through the summer because some districts tried to kind of recompense, tried to make up for that lag in education over the summer, um, not terrifically successfully. And then we have the lawsuits, the governor's order, and then the lawsuits. And that brought us to a whole other level of um, chaos. <laughs> And, and what, what do you, what, what, from where you are, boots on the ground, uh, what do you think? Now, this lawsuit, what, what was, describe what the lawsuit was and what was the outcome of this lawsuit. All right. So there were two lawsuits. One was in uh, southern Florida, and the other one was in central Florida in Orlando. And basically, it was a group of parents and um, educators, the educator union, who said, you know, why is the governor getting involved in school openings and closures, right? They felt that it was, you know, part of a political stunt maybe, and they felt that their safety wasn't being considered. So, you know, everybody goes to court, uh, mediation failed, and it turned out that the judge said, you know, it's unconstitutional. What has happened here, what the governor did was unconstitutional, and it's unconstitutional because it just arbitrarily disregarded the safety of the staff. It denied the local school boards any decision making. And, and that is a constitutional right in the state of Florida to a safe workplace and for local authority and autonomy over school districts. So the judge said, nope, not doing it, can't do it. So he said, you know, look, if you want to have the rest of the order that says you have to provide quality distance education, that can stay. But, you know, this closing school, school business isn't going to happen. Well, of course, the governor, you know, appealed immediately, which would stay that, which would mean, okay, the plan is back on. Well, then, of course, that was appealed. And now we found out that, you know, the plan is, the executive order is not in place currently. The problem is it all came about a week or two too late because, Schools had already reopened, 
and no one wants to disappoint the parents who are planning on this reopening, right, and who have, already have their kids there, they feel that they can't really close now. So the only real good thing that happened out of it is that it gives the local districts the authority that if there is an outbreak, that they can handle that locally. They can either close or, you know, not. So that's the short version. Okay. And as I was going to say, you there, boots on the ground. What do you think is going to happen with this uh, school opening? I think I, I'm really nervous. I Yeah. You know, I, I think, honestly, I think from what I've seen at Notre Dame, from what I've seen at UNC, um, these college reopenings, I mean, they had to close again almost immediately, some of them. Um Schools are a little different. There's not so much of a party vibe <laughs> with K through 12. And so um, we are seeing schools, uh, I think it was, I believe it was Polk County had uh, 100 positive, I believe the first day, or 100 who went to uh, either isolation or quarantine the first day. Uh, Flagler County had a teacher test positive the first day. So this will happen. Anytime you put people together, and, you know, students, they're not, some students can't wear masks due to disability or they can't remember to keep a mask on or, you know, basically this goes in the stuff happens category. Stuff happens. Yeah. And so I believe we are going to see um, these smaller outbreaks throughout the school districts. And then how the schools respond is up to them. But, yeah, I think there are going to be outbreaks for sure. Yeah, I was just telling you off the air, I had to get a, a tire today. And the first place I went to, they couldn't even change, they couldn't even sell me a tire uh, because so much of the staff had, had come down with COVID. Uh, that the guy could, oh. could yes, yes, it's I, I can't imagine uh, what's going to happen oh. a, a month from now in this town. It's just crazy. Um, well, and that that's the fear, Ed, is that you know kids and teachers they're all kind of locked up together, right? They yeah. all have the same air conditioning systems, and we know that that's a factor. Um, Kids are kids. I mean, anybody who has ever raised kids can tell you, you know, they don't always blow their nose in the appropriate place. Um, so you've got all these kids, and then we've got an aging teacher population, um, as well as all the support staff. For instance, the average age of a bus driver is 61 in Florida. So, you know, that is a high risk category almost per se. So you've got this little perfect storm where we started the school year this week or Monday, some districts are starting, where staff are calling out, staff are retiring, bus drivers are not, you know, uh, coming into work. And so we're also trying to put new staff members in constantly. And it's just, it's just very, very chaotic. We work in 12 counties and every county we've spoken to has said, this is like being in a blender because everything changes daily. Yeah, crossing guards too, they usually in their 60s as well. Oh yeah, um, yeah, what, absolutely. That's terrifying. What, what other services do you offer there in the children's rights units? Okay, so we do direct representation of clients. We help kids who's, um, who may have a disability. Uh, we also help families who are discriminated against uh, with a racial claim or a sex claim, you know, for instance, a sexual orientation, transgendered, um, perceived sexual orientation. Uh, so those are the we cover most frequently. Okay. So basically, if you're having problems at school and, and your child has a disability, uh, that's the biggest bunch of our work. And there's so much of it, Ed. I mean, there's 250,000 kids across Central Florida with disabilities in school. And so, you know, you figure there's there's room for a lot of mayhem with those kind of numbers. Yeah, I had no idea the numbers were that big. 250,000, that's incredible. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. Um, and, you know, some kids are more impacted with disability than others, but a significant number of those kids are impacted to a level where you know, everything changes with their education. They may need one-on-one -on -one support in school. They may need blind and uh, low vision services. They may get some hard of hearing services. I mean, it's just the gamut. It's huge, huge. 
And if we don't intervene early on, you know, they waste so many years, um, and it affects the whole rest of your life. Uh, you're doing, it, it, you guys are doing great work over there. Uh, what would you like oh, to leave you. us with uh, about the uh, the Community Legal Services of Mid Florida, CLSMF.org? Um, I think I would just like to, you know, leave you all with the thought that we are, we just stand here ready to serve the community. That is what we do. That is what all of us do. And, um, you know, we are strictly here to support the community for people who cannot afford access to education or to uh, legal work. And so that's what I want to leave you with. And what if they don't live in, in mid-Florida there? Are there other organizations you could refer them to? Yes, there are um, either um, nonprofit law firms uh, across the state. We have divided the state into areas, and some are done by uh, the Legal Services Corporation, which is my parent organization. Um, some are done by other legal aids. And so if I would suggest if you are outside of Central Florida, outside of our 12 counties, you can just Google uh, legal aid. Uh, you can Google legal services, and it will take you where you need to go. Katie Kelly, thank you so much. Uh, the Community Legal Services of Mid Florida Incorporated. You go to clsmf.org, and uh, Miss Kelly here is the hard head of the uh, the Children's Rights Unit. Uh, Miss Kelly, thank you so much. It has been my pleasure. Thank you, Ed. Bye. Bye. And now a word from our sponsors. OppermanReport.com. Hey, do you like what you're hearing? Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report, reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on on advertising rates. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at one 877 986-7771 and get your sales rolling. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com. 
and book your first session today. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers. I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. That's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at kmdlaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to kmdlaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMD-LAW. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMD Law. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. Thank you so much for listening to the Opperman Report. I want to welcome all our new listeners at WWPR 1490 AM in the Tampa Bay area. We're brand new down here. We're getting a nice warm welcome. We have great advertising opportunities for local sponsors, local businesses, but also international websites and international companies too. We're on our other stations in California, Nevada, Utah, and on the internet worldwide. But down here in Tampa Bay, Florida, we have some great opportunities for you to come in and get very, very affordable advertising rates. Get a hold of me at Opperman Report at G email.com and we'll cut you a good deal.